All right, let's watch this together. This is making the rounds and being sent to me. Uh, High Point Police, apparently in uh, North Carolina, taking a subject into custody and reportedly using excessive force. Let's watch this one together. I haven't seen this yet, uh, so let's check it out. Right now, we are looking into excessive force allegations that are tied to arrests in High Point. High Point Interim Police Chief Curtis Cheeks released a statement earlier today regarding two arrests that were made Monday night. Here's a portion of that statement. In it, the interim police chief says, I am aware of a video posted on social media of five High Point Police Department officers making an arrest. The video posted only shows a portion of the arrest and does not provide accurate context to the actions of any of the parties involved before, during, and after the arrest. While we follow our established protocols for review after use of force, we want to provide details about the call officers responded to and explain what happens when officers are involved in any use of force. As for the interim chief's entire statement regarding these arrests, you can read it in full right now on WFNYNews2.com. The police chief referenced a video, but there are several videos posted on social media. We're going to show you one that we have received permission to use. In the video, it shows five officers arresting two men. Later in the video, it also shows an officer using a baton. We have the video, and we are going to bring in now WFMY News 2's Amber Lake. Tanya, this video is hard to watch. It involves five officers and eventually two suspects. We're going to show that video for you right now in its entirety. It runs about three minutes long. You can see a man on the ground. You see several officers from the High Point Police Department. This is being recorded from inside in town suites on North Main Street. It happened Monday night at 1130 p.m. Police say it started as a larceny call at the Walmart on North Main Street. The High Point Police Department says officers on scene reported that the suspect physically resisted arrest. Police say a second suspect was also charged with resisting arrest. Now take a moment to watch this video. All right, let's watch the play by play here. You got three cops on one. There's four, five, then back to four. Another subject handcuffed. Where's your handcuffed yet? Can't tell. Looks like he's still working to get the cuffs on. Okay, hasn't gotten the cuffs on yet. One cuff. Which they say that about 73 to 75 percent of all resisting arrest comes after that first cuff, cuff goes click. Four on one. Subject still moving. Couldn't care less if he's black or white. I don't care. It's not about racial. Not everyone's going to want to make it racial. I'm so tired of hearing that bullshit. <clears throat> okay. Looks like, uh, oh, it's at a corporal. Comes in with a couple strikes. Another officer's doing a couple strikes in the back. Baton comes out. That's a asp of baton, looks like, which are the friction lock ones, which are inferior to the monadnock, unless there's new technology. I had the monadnock, uh, had a, a locking mechanism in the inside, which with the friction locks, when you hit them, you can actually shake them loose and they'll collapse on you. I know asp was really big back in the 90s. Oh, no, it looks like a monadnock. I can't tell by a tip. But the psychological effect uh, was supposed to be the same thing as a pump-action shotgun. Like, you get that, oh, that was the point for the uh, uh, the collapsible batons and why they were so popular. You just whip that thing out and have people go, damn, all right, I'm not messing with you. All right, <clears throat> continuing, continuing, continuing. Well, I got two standing up. The third one's gone. Got two on the, uh, well, here comes another one, another cop. As you see punches are cop. thrown, a baton is used. You see what appears to be pepper spray and what also appears to be a taser. You also see how it apparently ends with more officers arriving on scene. They eventually take the suspect away. 
Now, the man who shot this video did give us permission to air it. He says today he's still shocked with everything that happened Monday night. He says the kids even saw this entire... All right, let's back up and take a look at it play by play here. Uh, we're going to look at the beginning of the video. I don't care what the crime is to a degree because you remember, I've told these guys this a million times before. When it comes down to use of force, this person or the subject, if, if they robbed a Walmart or they blew up a daycare center... The use of force is in the context of the moment. And I know a lot of people are like, well, what's the intent? Well, you have no idea, right? So you can't say, uh, you can. There are certain things you can say. Like if, a guy, if the guy goes into daycare, starts pumping off rounds, um, and you want to walk right up to him and not say a word and put a bullet in their head, you can, right? Well, you have to announce your police presence first. No, your intent is to terminate the threat, you know, the life-threatening behavior. There are use of force. Remember, I said that a million times. If, the, if he goes and he shoots up a daycare center, drops the gun, puts his hands up, you can't go and physically attack hard as hell uh, by saying, well, I'm, he's, I'm trying to terminate his life-threatening behavior. No, he surrendered. So I know that it's a lot It's a lot to process for a lot of people who are so irritated on the concept of what cops use force for and how they could use it. All right, let's look at this together here. So I get uh, he's, somebody's, this is actively resisting and passively resisting, right? This is actively resisting. Uh, passively resisting would be uh, just saying no. You know, uh, it, it translates it like when you say no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to jail. That's that's passively resisting. The second you go to put hands on and they tense up, that's actively resisting. You know, you're not allowing to be put into uh, handcuffs. All right, number one, first things first. I'm gonna tell you this: female cop's gonna be utterly fucking useless. Uh, number two, this in this position here. Every single politician in America who voted against a rear naked choke or any type of uh, neck constraints, this would have been ended instantaneously with a properly executed rear naked choke. Full stop. End of story. Not going to change my mind. You're never going to get me to say otherwise. You saw how many other cops had to come in because their tactics weren't working and then this man was still resisting. I don't care what he's on. I don't care how jacked up. Do people still do PCP on meth, drugged up, whatever he is. When you slow down and cut off the blood supply that goes to the brain because some of you dumb fuck politicians don't understand the difference between an air choke and a blood flow choke and you pass him out for 10 seconds he's going to be easy as baby shit to put in fucking cuffs you politicians have no clue what you're doing and how much you ruined law enforcement and how this whole fucking mess i could have stopped the video right here could have stopped the damn video right here but you dumb shits don't understand what you're doing so now you have to have seven cops show up to a scene for one guy who's resisting because their training sucks to begin with well, let's continue. As we're watching. Yeah, okay. Uh, here's another thing, too, if you think, and this is why training is so bad. If this cop here on the left, this cop here on the right, took him by the wrist and stretched his arms all the way out, you're losing control, or he's losing control. He's losing leverage and ability to fight. The closer your hands are to your center line, uh, it's a position of strength, right? If I say this all the time, if you take a five-pound dumbbell and you hold it at your chest, you could hold it all day long. You extend it further out wherever your arms are, like the fullest length, you have no power. You're going to get tired. Stretch those those fucking arms out these are more this, again cops don't get training and the thing is they don't take training for themselves right it's a very small percentage of cops who actually take the job seriously enough to go get training on themselves yeah all right we're gonna start some strikes now you know here's the problem i have with strikes the human body is designed for fight or flight right you're gonna tell me and i've said this a million times what happens when you start hitting somebody? They tense up and they go right back to protection mode. It's a, it's an automatic body response system. He's bleeding now, coming out of his mouth, great. Actively resistance, trying to get away. The strikes are going to do shit. She's useless. She's just fucking useless. Yeah, and I, now they've got to come in and get two more strikes there. The, the strikes are shitty and they're useless. Now, it doesn't mean they don't have a place in time, but I'm going to tell you, in this circumstance, when it comes down to control tactics, strikes do not do anything. Oh, you strike them in the common peronial. Oh, strike them here and there. They don't do shit, guys. Sorry. And I come from a, a striking martial art background. Grappling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, wrestling in this context is superior. 
It's always going to be this way. Again, rear naked choke could have ended this. They have no no, no joint control. They don't know how to control. They don't know how to control the points of the body, spinal manipulation, head where the where the head goes, the body goes. They will keep letting his head get up. They have no idea. You know, this corporal comes in with a couple strikes. What's he doing? Is he striking at the shoulder? You, I don't know what's she doing. Striking at the lower back. Striking at his at his legs. Again, the more you strike, it's not going to do anything. He's going to continue. Then a baton comes out. All right, you're hitting for pain compliance. Clearly, it's not working. This guy's not feeling pain. Uh, Again, you would have an easier time taking those batons and pressing them in to the, the larger mass tissue, right? Take that baton, put it right in his hamstring, and kneel on the fucking baton. If you are looking for pain compliance, stick it right. If he's in a prone position, he's down, you line that up right in the back of his legs, and you dig your knee and your hands, and you go to try to break his fucking femur, right? That's what you do. Because that's going to give him pain compliance. Guarantee his arms are going to shoot out like crazy. Or you take it, you collapse the baton, you dig it right in the ribs. All right? You don't hit. You use it as a pressure tool. Do not put the baton on the back of the neck. You don't want to sit there and snap that. Don't put it on the spine. Larger muscle groups, thighs, legs, hamstrings. Absolutely. Put back of the calf. Yeah, all in all, again, just piss poor police training. You got so many, she's fucking useless. All these cops out here to do one job on one guy when a rear naked choke could have ended this like crazy. Uh, some some simple control tactics. And I don't care. So, well, just, no, shut the fuck up. You guys don't train. It's very simple. You do not train. And for the most part, we know that the fitness standards of law enforcement suck anyways. So the longer the fight goes on, the more exhausted the cops are going to be because they're fighting with him and each other. One's pulling one way, one's pulling the other way. There's barely any fucking communication going on with how to do this shit. They can't focus. They don't know the proper con- uh, manipulation tactics to use it. They're clearly using, they're not using excessive force. They're you. What they did was they resorted to force out of frustration, That's the biggest problem with law enforcement and use of force issues is cops resort to frustration because the shit isn't working. So a rear naked choke could have ended this in a, in a, in two seconds, two to three seconds. Thank you. You scumbag shit, dick politicians. Appreciate you doing that one out there. Oh, we have to, we have to get rid of all, all neck, all neck restraints and a shoulder pin. For those who don't know, scoop up on the underside of the shoulder right? Wrap your arm around one side, wrap around the other side, and just cut off that blood supply. If you are in law enforcement and do not know a shoulder pin or a uh, shoulder vascular restraint or whatever they're calling it this day, you're just basically doing a headlock with a shoulder in place. They say it's far safer, whatever. It is unbelievably effective. Get a guillotine. Get a front guillotine on somebody. Get that shoulder. You're going to get a lot more uh, uh, easy compliance based on the immobilization of a subject. It's just a bunch of cops who, you know, clearly uh, piss poor training. And you got somebody who's fighting, showing that, man, if you're not manipulating people the proper way physically, this shit happens. I really don't have a problem with this. I have a problem with, hey, your tactics weren't working. Why were you still doing them? Switch up your tactics. Uh, start training more. Guys, I don't do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I am a, uh, a former wrestler, wrestling coach. I'm a Wing Chun uh, a combatives instructor and expert. Um, those are my backgrounds. And obviously, former law enforcement as well, too. Hope this video made sense. Hope it looked, uh, let me know what you are thinking in the comments, what your views are. But uh, I don't really have a problem with these techniques because they were not excessive. But what they were were just shitty, shitty techniques that weren't working. So find some that do. Go train. Stay safe out there, guys. See you in the next video.